everyone, I am Glenn George. I am an architect by profession. I am currently based in Bangalore. So I was born and brought up in Muscat and around 10 years ago I moved to India for my higher studies. So ever since I've been here and in uh, my six years of career I've had the opportunity to work in both the setups like uh, my first job as a practicing architect which was based in Cochin and Kerala. I was working with a team where I was almost I was almost like the only woman on the team and uh, my current job where three years ago I pivoted to an academic domain and I'm currently an assistant professor in an architecture school. So here I work uh, with a team where it's majorly women. Now in my experience, uh, both the opportunities have given me enough space to grow. To lead as a woman has not been that difficult. I've had a great team. I think I've been extremely fortunate that way. For me, my everyday struggle comes with the situations or scenarios that um, people in my closer circle, be it family or friends, throw at me. Those are the times where I'm actually sitting and wondering, oh God, it's all because of my girl. You know, so right from the world wondering or empathizing, sympathizing with my parents for not having a boy or times where my parents had to think so much to uh, send me off for my higher studies or when me and my sister, we drive around and get things done for the home, that's like, oh, you're just boys. Or when my parents were diagnosed with certain health situations, of course, we had all the empathy from the world, but we were also uh, being flooded with this emotion of now how what will happen to the girls you know they're going to remain unsettled or times where um, family members thought it was okay to ask me if I'm how to cook and clean uh, when it came to a marriage prospect today I'm a mother to a eight month old boy so people keep asking me how do you juggle home work the baby and my husband so uh, I think every day throws us with such situations. What I've observed is that in our work environment, in most cases, there are so many changes, so many reforms, and people are so conscious about what they are saying, how they are behaving. So there is some sense of progress when it comes to uh, saying the right things to, you know, and treating everyone with respect. But when we go back to our homes, there's no such scope for reforms or anything. So people are continuing to say things that they did. And in the name of, you know, casual humor, they keep saying comments, which is definitely uh, can be, you know, put under stereotyping or gender bias. Now we can look at our own mothers. So many of them who chose to stay back home and raise wonderful families. And I think um, compared to the working women, they are actually being subjected to these kind of situations on an everyday basis and probably all of us are part of making such comments. So I have been focusing on uh, sensitizing uh, the youth that I come in contact with. My current um, job also gives me the position of a chief proctor where I interact with um, almost 200-300 students on an everyday basis and uh, to bring in a sense of conscious speaking um, or sensitize them with such issues and to make sure that we begin to look at people as people, as human beings and not as a gender is something that I have uh, been focusing on and trying to um, put out there through my body of work. Uh, I think uh, when it comes to our families, our friend circle, that's exactly where it needs to begin. Um, we need to think not twice or thrice but many times before saying even the most casual statements today because somewhere we might be hurting someone. So campaigns like this mean a lot that way because hearing everybody's voice is important. It's not just people who, are, who have a professional um, accomplishment that matters but even you know all or everyone who is at home and doing some kind of um, uh, some kind of a task for their own families. They are also going through the same thing. So I think the that's where Hear a Voice is going to be uh, extremely relevant. And I really hope that we begin to hear many more voices like this. Thank you.